Um, thank you very much. On the 4th of August in 2002, 31-year-old Mohamedou Ould Slahi was flown to Guantanamo Detention Camp, a military prison in Cuba which has been used to detain and torture hundreds of people since being established in the wake of 9-11. Slahi was held without charge or trial for an unimaginable 14 years during which he was forced to endure physical beatings, sleep deprivation, solitary confinement, sexual humiliation, starvation, and on one occasion, a mock execution. A year before his 2016 release, his unflinching and profoundly important memoir, Guantanamo Diary, was published to wide acclaim. And it was my, my company's personal honor to help develop this story to the screen earlier this year in a film called The Mauritanian. Mohamedou is one of just two Guantanamo detainees ever to have set foot on UK soil. And tonight he joins us to read a letter of his own written to a political prisoner. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my huge pleasure. Please join me in welcoming Mohamedou Ould Sai. to thinking, but I swear to Allah, I'm not the Uber driver who picked you up yesterday. <laughs> Hence to God. <clears throat> Dear ex, I hope my letter finds your body well. I know your soul is well. I realize that you cannot tell me all that is in your heart. But as a free man, I can say what's in mine. I hope and pray that you will be a free man very soon with much life still left in you. I will do the big favor <clears throat> of not lecturing you or giving you advice. I will not tell you not to despair. I will not tell you to follow in the steps of your great ancestors. You are not your ancestors. I will not tell you that you are a hero because that is something only you can decide. But I can tell you a true stories so that you can know that you are not alone. When the pandemic hit, the whole world turned into a huge detention center, or almost a detention center with internet, with the freedom to use the bathroom without a camera pointed at you, to cook your own food, to go to sleep and wake up as you please. I'm watching in amazement as people complain about the minor inconvenience problems. I don't know how to pronounce inconvenience. The social distancing measures, I'm embarrassed to admit that I sometimes have these schadenfreude moments. When I think about the many years I spent on literal lockdown. In the years on years you have spent in lockdown too. My nephew Muhammad said that he'd rather catch the virus than be confined at home any longer. Other members of my family are ready to take the chance and leave home for unnecessary stuff. People around me are all but freaking out. When they are freaking out, they are feeling your imprisonment, although they may not know it. But then they will remember. They will remember that this is not imprisonment. 
they'll think of the true prisoners and prisoners like you living under extreme lockdown, forced to be distant, alone, deprived of any right of, to participate in any decisions about their lives. I count these as progress. I can tell you that our world has changed. I hope for the better. We have one enemy now, and we're all united to fight and survive. You know, I never told you this before, but for the first time, I see hope. Much love, Mohamedou.